Welcome back for another monthly movie preview. This time, we're talking about you, June. Hey, June. This is also standing in for our weekly roundtable. Uh, so, sorry slash too bad. So no, it's two for the price of one. Is that it, what it is? Isn't that a deal? Isn't that like a special deal? It's... Well, but really, is the price the time they spend watching? Yeah. What should have been two things is one, now one thing, though. You only have to watch one ad. Ah. Mm. So you're welcome. All right. First week in June. June 5th. Uh, not excited at all about this weekend. <laughs> no, me neither. I don't know about you guys. But uh, uh, first one up, Spy. Now, to be fair, I've heard that Spy is actually pretty good. Apparently, it's actually really, really funny. It's about time for a Melissa McCarthy movie to be actually really, really funny, because she's actually really, really funny. But uh, Tammy was like a <laughs> yeah. embarrassment to well, and, and Identity Thief was... <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I, uh, Paul... I, I like the heat. The, the heat, heat was fine. The heat, the heat was, was good, fine. but it also... It wasn't that, great. That but... was like the transition from... Supporting in Bridesmaids to starring in that. Yeah. So. But here's my thing about The Heat, though. It was a funny movie. Melissa McCarthy is on just a whole other planet in terms of funny. Like, she's great. Uh, it was a terrible action movie. Oh, yeah. Like, the, yeah. the action was awful. That's the thing that worries me about this movie is this movie definitely needs to have good action. Uh, yeah. And The Heat had none whatsoever. Not even close. Look, at the end of the day, I think with the reviews that I've seen of Spy, I think if you love Melissa McCarthy, this is going to be like the best thing she's done since Bridesmaids. Right. If you don't love Melissa McCarthy, then this will be surprisingly good. And if you hate Melissa McCarthy, why would you go see this movie? <laughs> really, odds are you're not going to go see it anyway. I mean, it's got Statham. It's got Jude Law. It's got Rose like Byrne. It's got a great cast. I'll, I'll basically, I think it's definitively in the category of if somebody I know wants to go see it, I'll be like, sure. Right. But I will not initiate the the outing no. to go see it Spy. It will not be my idea to go see no. Spy. I'm I bet you that. I will watch it on a plane someday. Oh, 100%. Oh, it will be an excellent plane movie. Excellent. But moving on in June 5th to another movie 100% not excited about, Entourage. Nope. We can, we can probably just get this one all together because it's just going to be another episode of Entourage that I didn't ask for. So. Yeah, like, and again, if you loved Entourage, you'll probably have a good time. Right. If, if Go you to thought town, man. Entourage was a, you know, Lollapalooza of douchiness or whatever, <laughs> you'll probably think this is a Lollapalooza right. of douchiness. Yeah. Douchapalooza. Douchapalooza. Or it'll be like the Woodstock of douche. Douche. Douche stock. Douche stock. I, what else wood, we wood got? douche. I mean, even the trailers look douche like cello. Douche cello. Douche cello. <laughs> I can't expect this to be anything more than a, a slightly longer episode of Entourage, where everything is going to to just fall apart completely. And oh my God, Vince, Vinny Chase's career is over. And then by the end, it's like, oh, actually, no, everything worked out great. Yeah. I didn't mind the show, but I didn't love it. And I, again, if you loved this show, this movie was made for you, mm -hmm. and nobody else. The same as the Sex and the City movie. Here's the problem, though. Everyone I know that loved Sex and the City hated the Sex and the City movies. By and large, shows end either on their own terms mm -hmm. or they get canceled because nobody watches them. Mm -hmm. It's a rare thing that a movie has enough fan base to, to, or a TV show has enough of a fan base that still got canceled. Like, you saw it with yeah. the Arrested Development Netflix deal. That was kind of a similar situation. Yeah. Um, and that show was and that sh okay. the Netflix show was eh, it's fine, fine. The Veronica Point Mars is, movie was fine. Yeah, it was fine. I don't think yeah. anybody really needed it though. And that's when, when shows end on their own terms the way that Entourage did. Uh, why are we going back? Serenity is probably the only example of one that I actually really liked. Mining mo because especially for an hour long drama, a movie is is going to be what thirty minutes longer. It's too it's short. All, it's yeah, too, it's not. Who cares? It's like one short. of the reasons you get invested in a show is like this ongoing. Uh, you know, commitment to these characters, mm -hmm. uh, and then you only have, you're just getting another episode. You're right. getting an episode and a half. But if it's an amazing f***ing episode, it's worth it. It just rarely sure. is. It's just, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that. Okay, moving on. Still in June 5th, uh, a third movie that I'm not gonna go see. Insidious Chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3, actually a prequel. Yeah, Chapter 3 a prequel because nobody came back. <laughs> <laughs> Step, because, step because, one in not understanding Insidious Chapter 3, it's not Chapter 3, no, it's Chapter, chapter zero. 0. Prologue. Yeah, it's yeah prologue. well, Rose Byrne and Patrick Wilson refused to come back. Sure. Uh, the director didn't come back. Right. 
and uh, and they wanted to bring back the most popular character, which was the creepy psychic lady, uh-huh. like in like in Poltergeist. But she, spoiler, if you haven't seen the first one and first two and still care, she died at the end of the first one. Uh-huh. Uh, so she was undead in the second one, but she would be super undead at this point. So like, there's prequel. Yeah. That's so prequel. now she's alive again. My issue is not with the prequel. It's that they called it Chapter Three. Right. I I followed this movie a little bit, but not super intensely. So I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. Uh, which is that I think they promise a trilogy. I think that it was set up to be a three part story, okay. but then after the second one, <laughs> no one came Everybody back. Comes down. And because everyone felt like the story was over, but they had promised this trilogy, so the only missing piece, and the only thing that I think a lot of fans actually still had questions about, was the 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 previous what how, right. how it got set up no, in the no, first no, place, sorry. which which is great, which is great. We're, we're sending Casey, so he'll we'll find Casey out. Casey will go check it out. Casey's going to the premiere and let us know. That's going to be fun for Casey, hopefully, because Casey's <laughs> into this kind of thing. No, no, no. Oh, he's not. Casey it doesn't like himself. these things. Oh. We were going to send Truly, but Truly pissed his pants thinking about going. Gotcha. So we sent Casey because he is ready to urinate in his pants, but not. Pre-urinated. Truly's wife is a big horror movie fan. That's what Maybe he said. Maybe we should send Truly's wife. I I told him I would I if he I asked him if he would go if his if I got his wife to be able to go with plus him. Plus one, sure. And he said she'll really be excited, but then no, I don't want it too scary. Wow. Uh, but look, I I know that Insidious is a popular franchise among horror fans. Like among it's got a decent, spouses and significant uh, exactly. others. It's um, not a it's, it's not it's not very bad. horror-y. It's horror in the sense that like it deals with like the grotesque and the dead and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But they're not really very scary movies. Because the trailer is as stock a horror film as you can get. Yeah. Even, we were watching yeah. it together and I even joked about like the like I jumped you're out like, a like, little boom. too early, you know. I was and trying yeah. to time it, but I missed it by like three and a half seconds. Well, and what I liked about the first two was that they were super f-ing weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, there are, there are a lot of really good horror tropes in it. It plays around with that. They're not the best movies in the world. They're not the best horror movies. They're just kind of they're fine. Yeah. Um, they're they're well made movies, but they were trying to do something interesting, and they were weird, and they had weird characters, and weird shit happened. This one seems cookie cutter. This one yeah. seems like paint by numbers right. horror, and I it doesn't. Yeah, I mean the only the only reason that I, I sort of wanted to talk about it is because I had heard that it was at least an interesting. I, I've, I've heard that about mm-hmm. the Insidious movies. I've never seen it myself. But then Lee Wan El, the guy who directed the original Saw film, um, and his other film Cooties, which is with Elijah Wood, just got a trailer, and that actually looks pretty rad, mm-hmm. I think. And so you know, I was like, oh, you know, maybe uh, maybe it's, it's good. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the trailer was super stock. The trailer was very stock. But it might just be the trailer. It might just yeah. be the yeah. trailer for the first two Insidious was also super stock, again, because they were selling it as a class, as a traditional horror, but it's super weird. It was really hard to sell that movie because it's so weird. Well, look, I think we talked about the weekend of June 5th way too much because I'm probably <laughs> not going to go see a movie that weekend. Uh, June 12th, here we go. I'm the only one in this room excited about this movie. Jurassic World hits June 12th. I'd call myself borderline excited. Like, it okay, I still like stand fun. by what I said because that's not, <laughs> that's not a terribly ringing endorsement. Like, I might be borderline it. excited. No, like I, I actually want to. Yeah, you're going to see yeah. it. I want to see it. He's legit excited. There I'm actually go. excited. We have the full spectrum right. here. The other thing that about this is that it's it's a direct sequel to the original, so it's sort of forgetting about the Lost World and Jurassic. Part three. Cool, because I haven't seen this. Well, there you go. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have you to. You should read The Lost World. The book. The Lost World is, is the better great. of the two books. It's the better book. Yeah. The, we are, I promise you, we'll do it. What's the difference at some point? But trust me, it's the better book. Yeah. Uh, okay, but I mean, look, Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard. I'm excited for Jake Johnson to be in there doing funny things. D'Onofrio is is just huge in physical stature these days. <laughs> He's gigantic. He'll be there too. Yeah. Um, so it'll be, look, it'll be fun. And, and this is one that we're all going to go see. It's going to make a ton of money, and it's probably going to get bad reviews, but I'm going to enjoy it anyway, no matter what you say. I hope that I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay. Um, if you're not going to go see the giant movie, Jurassic World, on June 12th, uh, you've got me and Earl and the Dying Girl that's going to be in theaters to go see that weekend. Uh, now, this one it got a lot of really good buzz out of Sundance. Mm-hmm. It was playing at Sundance when we were there. Um, and from everything that I've heard about this movie, it's it's great. Yeah, that's another one 
that we have a review up of. Yes. It, it, annotation here. But, uh, but yeah, it, everything I've heard is that it's good. I think it falls into the, like, 500 days of summer garden very quirky, state. Very indie. Yeah. Quirky, I would say more indie. garden state than 500 days of summer. I, look, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, and it's going to be the polar opposite of Jurassic World. Oh, yeah. But I'm excited about it. I mean, it's got a great cast. Like, Nick oh, Offerman yeah. is mm -hmm. playing some weirdo, which is <laughs> awesome. And Molly Shannon is there. And there's, John like, Barenthal a cat from Walking for no Dead reason. There. Yeah, it kind of looks like what I wish The Fault in Our Stars had been. Yeah. Fault in Our Stars was a little too sort of glossy, big budget. This feels like what Fault in Our Stars, the John Green version was. Mm. But it, the movie, yeah, you're right. It got like, it got a little it a bit, it movie. got a little bit like yeah. glossed. Yeah. yeah, it's like we can afford the crane shots in Amsterdam, so why don't we put them in? But also, and let's not show our star being like too sick. Yeah. Because like, she won't look good. All right. The following weekend, June 19th. This, um, this weekend's a good weekend. This weekend yeah. is a good weekend. These, honestly, June 12th and June 19th make me wish that June 5th happened afterwards. <laughs> a weekend to catch up. Because uh, June 19th, first one up, Inside Out. It's Pixar's latest movie, everybody. Let's have a party. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not Pete, Cars. It's not Cars, yeah. It's Pete Docter, who did Monsters, Inc. and did Up. Um, Amy Poehler, Louis Black is, is a voice. Like, oh, the, the voice, Bill Hader. It's, it's a movie about the personification of emotions inside everybody. So you, it's literally about the feels. Yeah. yeah. They finally just, just were like, you know what? We're not going to f*** around with anything else. This is literally about your emotions. Going for the record of the number of times a Pixar make, movie makes you cry. Right. Which is going to be like eight, yeah. nine. Eight or nine. <laughs> Everything I've read of anybody who's seen it, seen half of it, seen scenes from it, is like, yeah, good job, Pixar again. Good. Yeah. And Pixar. Pixar did it again. You know? You know. So yeah, I mean, I I pasted this big uh, synopsis of the movie in, in in our little notes here, and I honestly haven't read it because I don't really want to read it. Like I, this is a movie that I, I just want to go in and sort of enjoy. You know, up. I, I waited too long to see up, and so I had heard so much about it, and I wasn't surprised by anything, and nothing felt. I cried in the first wonderful. ten minutes. Yeah, up. everybody Every did, and then I watched time. it, and I'm like, "Am I a robot? Because I got nothing here. Because I heard about." The, the music event. starts, and I'm starting yeah. to cry right now. Um, so I would like to have one of those experiences. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm checking out. I Until saw you World see of it. Color a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, be professional, please. We're, God, we're trying damn to it, do Damn it, Disney a, Pixar. All right, the point is, go see Inside Out. The other movie that's coming out this weekend yeah. is The Overnight. The Overnight. Now. The Overnight is a movie that Cruz and I saw at Sundance yeah. and loved. Yeah. This is a great R-rated comedy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, very, it's about a, um, a couple uh, that are new to L.A. and they meet Jason Schwartzman at yeah. a hipster park. And his cool French his wife. cool French wife. And they have the, their kids are the same age, so they're like, we should be friends. Come over for dinner tonight. Um, and, and from there, it goes insane. It goes to all these weird places. There are dicks. So many dicks. Dicks out in the movie in the funniest, most choice way. Yes. Um, okay, as long these as will be the choice best dick. Dicks. Choice dick. It kind of makes you wait for the dick. Yeah. Like you're, we're, not, I, we're making a big deal out of it now, and I feel like that's a mistake because yeah. when the dicks came out in the movie was a great moment. Yeah. That, for me, that was the moment of Sundance. The mo that when was the your dicks moment came of out of that movie. I was like, they went there. Yeah. See for me. I feel like you might be <laughs> spoiling up for me right now. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get you to <laughs> stop crying. Because I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie, it's an hour twenty minutes. It it knows what it is. It gets in there. It does its thing. It leaves. Um, it makes you uncomfortable in all of the best yeah, ways. It makes you uncomfortable, like. Like laughing uncomfortable, it makes you like uncomfortable, uncomfortable. It's just a really, really effective comedy, and and it's about, uh, it's about these couples dealing with their own thing, and and you know the crazy couple at the beginning of the movie, you start to realize that the normal couple is actually pretty crazy too, and it's it's very reflective of it, it's it's got great relationship stuff in there, like it's a legitimately, really, really good movie, just on on just about every level. I can't stress nice. enough. 
how much I enjoyed this movie. Yeah. And I can't I, wait to go see it again. I, I want to go see it again. I also wonder, I think if you're married and have a kid around that age, it's probably even better a movie mm -hmm. than for like the rest of us. Yeah. I, I don't think my kid's old enough for me to have an experience like the overnight right. quite yet. <laughs> but, you're not trying to set her up I'm with friends yet. Exactly. But. I don't have to worry about play dates quite yet. But uh, June 19th, the overnight is coming out. Definitely make a point to go see it. And there's also a review of, of that we did from Sundance that you can check out also. I've, I've already Where, is it, it. Is it up here somewhere? <laughs> Great. Um, so that's enough gushing yeah. about the overnight. I'm super um, jealous you Moving guys. on to the next movie we're going to talk about that weekend, still on June 19th, is Burying the X. Uh, now, you guys have never heard of this one. And the only reason that I had is because it's a Joe Dante film. And Joe Dante did the Gremlins, he did the Burbs, he did Inner Space, which is one of my sneak up favorite movies of all time, actually. If you I don't know when the last time you saw Inner Space was. I don't know what that is. Inner Space is Dennis Quaid <laughs> and it's Martin Short, and I'll explain it to you later. Okay. It's wonderful. But also Gremlins, also the Burbs. Joe Dante was a really, really funny voice in filmmaking back in the late 80s, early 90s. Kind of went away for a while. He's done a lot of TV and stuff anyway. But anyway, Bearing the X is, I feel like every month we're talking about a zombie movie. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about a zombie movie here with Bearing the X. It's about Anton Yelchin. His girlfriend dies after he's made the decision to break up with her. Because she's I, awful? Because she's awful. She's awful. She comes back from the dead still thinking that they're together, and now he has to actually break up with her. I don't know if we can say, well, this is a funny take on a zombie movie anymore. Mm. Because yeah. all the takes on the zombie movies, I Have think done. we've done now. This might yeah. be a zombie take on a funny movie then. Yeah, that might be a better way to put it. Because there's the, the trope of a guy not being able to break up with a girl is not, a, not an unexplored topic, right. but... Uh, but having her be a zombie who literally just won't go away. It's a, a, a that, decent metaphor. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun metaphor. It can be. That, that said, like, the trailer looked super kind of low rent, so yeah. I'm not I, sure what we're going to end up with here. Uh, but, you know, if, if people sent, to, if the trailer was just an anomaly and people seem to like it, I'm pretty excited to see what's coming out of uh, Joe Dante's. Uh, later years? Yeah, later years. <laughs> His renaissance. His or... renaissance. He also did Small Soldiers. Remember Small Soldiers? I remember it. I don't think I saw it. Small Soldiers would sneak up pretty good, too. Huh. Come on, guys. Late 80s, early 90s. Go back and revisit them. You're the comedy guy. I am not the comedy guy. <sighs> was... I, I thought we were all the good movie people. We are the, all the, the comedy the, guys. The late know, 80s, but... early 90s, we didn't quite have the autonomy to decide which movies That's we were fair. seeing this weekend. That's, That's true. fair. Just go to Joe Dante's IMDb page. And I, I look between 1985 and 1993, watch any of them, and they're all fun. So that's what my hope is for Bearing the X. Because the, the trailer is not a very good trailer, and I can't imagine the movie had any sort of budget at all. I'd like to think that Joe Dante has one left in the tank, and that it because there's some moments in the trailer that are genuinely pretty funny. Which are and, and like layered kind of funny, you know? So my point is, don't write it off, give it a shot. So, moving on to the last weekend of June, June 26th, Ted 2 coming out. Is anybody excited about Ted 2? Christina, you excited mm, about Ted 2? No. Were you excited about Ted? No. Did you see Ted? No. Oh. <laughs> Cruz, what do you think? You got anything? No. No? Did you not see for, for the first Ted? I did see the first I guess Ted. I'm the comedy guy, yeah. so I was the only one that had to see it. I, I saw the first, I saw most of the first Ted. <laughs> Truly is in Ted. I know Truly is in yeah. Ted. That's actually the only reason that yeah. I saw the first Ted. I didn't uh, work guys, here yet, so. I, go, if, if you want to, go find the time code in Ted where Truly and his big old teeth are. Yeah. Leave it down in the comments below, see if you can find Truly. But look, I, I kind of enjoyed the first Ted. I think Seth MacFarlane has a tendency to get real, real saccharine. Juxtaposed real. with like all of the rest of the raunch uh, that he does, it's it's not, I've never been able to buy into it in the movies. Like the fam Family Guy, I feel like you can get away with it, but in his movies, I've never been able to really buy into to tonally Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Like the, I mean, the the last one I can think of, the other than Ted, is which I wasn't so super huge fan of. Was a million ways to die in the yeah. West, which I hate. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was not uh, a comedy. It wasn't an anything. Yeah. It was barely a yeah. movie. 
Um, but Tetu, I, I will I will commend them for this though. They're like they're trying to tackle some sort of social issue, in a weird roundabout way. Kind of. Kind of. I look. I'm I'm trying. I think I'm trying to give them some credit. But is, here. is teddy bear adoption rights really like? Or no or marriage? Whatever. No marriage rights. Yeah. It feels like it's trying to tackle a big social issue, but I don't think it actually is. I wouldn't is. say, I w if it is tackling an issue, it's like tackling it like like a football player, <laughs> like right. actually damaging the issue. Yeah. Because like, but also, what, the, what are you really saying? The like, problem, you, the problem with it being, if it is a gay rights national issue, which I don't totally think it is, but if it is, the problem is that then you run into the like, really stupid people who are like, well, if we let gay people get married, then why don't we let people marry f***ing teddy bears? Probably. Yeah, and there's then... gonna be a, a bunch of idiots watching Ted 2 going, this See? is what I'm talking about. See? <laughs> we want Amanda Seyfried to be able to f*** a bear. Yeah. No. No. Well, I think she's f***ing Mark Wahlberg in the movie oh, anyway, okay. so we don't have to worry about that. Look, point but is... But they killed I, Mila Kunis, and again, that upsets me. Again, Ted 2, this is another one. June is full of movies that, if you like... Ted Wong. You're gonna love. Yeah. So I imagine if you're a big fan of Ted, um, you're gonna go see it. I, I got a, I got a real short lease with with Seth MacFarlane these days. Yeah. I'm not real. I'm not. I don't think it's gonna be any good at all. He doesn't cup my tea. He's not my cup of tea. That's he doesn't <laughs> cup your tea. He's not my cup of tea. Follow up question. What's your tea? <laughs> So let's move on, yeah. I think. Uh, and this is one we've all been excited about it for some time. Coming in right at the tail end of June. Big game. Big game. Big game. We've talked about this in, in I think, a couple of roundtables now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is a batshit insane Scandinavian film uh, about a kid who is going out into the wilderness to become a man. Point is, this movie looks nuts. Uh, it looks like, amazing nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And it has Samuel L. Jackson mm -hmm. because he will do anything. Which is great. Yeah. So he's the president of the United States, yeah. Air Force One crashes, and he's rescued by a 13 year old boy with a bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a homemade like, bow and arrow. It's like Hannah meets like Man on Fire. With like a tiny bit of Iron Sky. A little bit. Uh, like yeah. just, a, just a, a, a peppering of Iron Sky. Like that really low budget indie genre flick feel. And meanwhile, Jim Broadbent is there. Like, what are you doing here, Jim Broadbent? This is great. Like, it's, I don't know. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. this is this is super exciting. I think it's day and date too, so you don't have to. It Even if I'm staying home to watch it 100%. Oh, I am having to. people over to watch yeah. this. Yeah, I think That's... everyone in Finland is like, we saw this three years ago. Probably. Or whatever Finnish accents sound like. <laughs> All my accents sound the same. Long story short, we don't know what you guys sound like over there in Finland. I have we been apologize. to Finland and I cannot do a Finnish accent. Okay, well then It's I... lovely though. It is. Beautiful country. Beautiful country. <laughs> Great pastries. <laughs> All right, well how does everybody feel about June? Uh, the right. middle, the middle is hardcore. Yeah, there's good, there's some good stuff in June. It's there's like a, it's, it's, the, it's got, it's like a sandwich with amazing meat and shitty bread. Right. All right, guys, well, let us know what movies you're excited about in June. Also, let us know if and when you find Truly. Click like, subscribe, stick around for more Cinefix stuff. Right here on Cinefix, actually, is where we keep the Cinefix stuff. Here, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm.